Closed captioning brought to you by Google Slides. Hello, this is Ms. Chow. I teach in San Jose, California. Today I'll be lecturing about non-Mendelian genetics. In non-Mendelian genetics, it's basically not following Mendel's laws. It's a little bit crazy because there's so many different kinds, but they also have their own little rules, and that's why I have called it composed craziness. I split non-Mendelian genetics into five categories. Two main ones are single gene variation, which I will explain codominance, incomplete dominance, and polytropy, and then more than one gene, multiple alleles, polygenic traits, and then also we're going to talk about environmental factors on all kinds of genes, sex-linked genes, and lethal genes. We'll be exposed to several examples such as the Camille flower, blood, eye, skin color, and hemophilia. A single gene is one gene, a gene that has two possible alleles such as dominant and recessive. For codominance, it's a little bit different. Uh, it's when there are two or more factors that can be expressed or you can say dominant at the same time. The heterozygous genotype will give you both traits. Typically in a Mendelian setup, the dominant trait will overpower the recessive trait. For example, we're going to use the Camille flower, which is a flower that blooms on a bush-like plant. The red flower will be dominant over the white color. However, in a heterozygous setup, it will be expressing both red and white. If you have a genotype of both heterozygous parents, here are the progenies. The genotype of an uppercase and a lowercase heterozygous will give you both red and white. When you have homozygous recessive with both lowercase a's, it will give you white. And uppercase a's homozygous dominant will give you red. For incomplete dominance, it's when the dominant allele does not go all the way and recessive comes up a bit. So in a way that the phenotype of the heterozygous genotype is a mix of both traits, so they're actually partial of both phenotypic traits. Uh, the Camille flower is very unique. It also ex can express incomplete dominance where the flower color will be heterozygous and come out pink. The homozygous dominant will be red, homozygous recessive will be white. However, the heterozygous, you either can be codominant with both red and white or incomplete dominance with pink. So here in the Punnett square, the heterozygous will express red and white for codominant and pink if it is incomplete dominant. The third type is pleiotropy. It means a gene can have two or more phenotypic traits. So that means one gene can affect more than one phenotypic trait. We're going to use albinism by looking at this peacock. It is albino and it's white in more ways than one. What happened with this peacock, anybody with albinoism, the TYR gene has a mutation where no melanin is produced and that will affect the eye color, skin, and hair color, just like the rabbit here as well, and in humans as well. Albino individuals' eyes appear to be red because they have no pigment, so the red light is reflected back, thus giving the red look. The skin is very pale and translucent and blonde hair. Okay, we're going into more than one allele. Multiple alleles is when a gene can have more than two multiple alleles. Typically, we have two alleles of dominant and recessive. Let's go ahead and use human blood type. Having three alleles, you, we have a dominant with B antigen, a dominant I with A antigen, and a recessive I, which means they don't have any antigen. And since it has two or more, it, calls it multiple alleles. Let's go ahead and start with the A blood type. A blood type can be A or AO depending on the respective genotype. You have two capital dominant I's with A antigens on it and if you have that you have A blood type or if you have one allele with a dominant capital I and A antigen with a lowercase i recessive the A will still dominate over the recessive, so it's an AO. In both situations, they have A antigens on the blood, 
with B antibodies in the plasma. For B blood type, you have B or BO, where you have homozygous dominant I B antigens or heterozygous dominant capital I with B antigen and a lowercase i with no antigens. In both cases, they, some of the blood cells will have B antigens on it and in the plasma, they will have A antibodies. For blood type AB, you will have one of each where it's co-dominance of both expressing capital I with A antigens, capital I with B antigens. So we'll have both A and B antigens on the blood and no antibodies. Because AB blood patients do not have antibodies in the plasma, usually when they donate blood, they are very good and they would donate and extract the plasma because the plasma doesn't have any antibodies, which is very useful for cancer patients. Finally, for the O blood type, you have to have two alleles of the recessive lowercase i's. That means none of the blood cells have any antigens on it. However, they in the plasma, they will have A and B antibodies. And then finally, for the R factor, if you have the protein, it's going to be positive, and there will be no antigens in the plasma. And if you don't have the RF factor, your RH negative, you will have RH antibodies in the plasmid. Polygenic traits. Expression of a trait that is influenced by more than one gene. So as you can see, height, hair, and skin color, and also eye color as well. The eye color, most eye color base is blue due to the tindal scattering light, which also will explain why the sky is blue. So the more melanin protein you have, the more your eye color will become darker, going from blue, green, to maybe hazel, which may be in between, or brown color. Skin color has multiple genes, such as SLC24A5, MFSD12, OCA2, and HER. C2. As you can see, it's more than one gene that determines our skin color. And this is why we have such a wide variety of skin color that is expressed. In the effect of the environment on the phenotypic expression, which is the third type of non-Mendelian genetics, is like when skin is exposed to the sun, it'll form freckles or it will get darker. So this is why our skin gets darker in the sun or what we call being tanned. And this is our way of our skin protecting our skin from being burned. The other example of phenotypic expression being affected by the environment are hydrangeas. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever tried taking home a hydrangea and then it was one color, then you plant it in the ground. Years later, the color of the hydrangea changes. And they have found that hydrangeas change colors not only based on the pH, like how acidic or basic your soil is, but the amount of aluminum ions present. Here is the wavelength in terms of expressing the color of the hydrangeas and what was amount of aluminum that were in the sepals, which are like the petals of the flowers. In X-links inheritance, X-links means genes on the sex chromosomes, in particular the X chromosome. The inheritance is different between males and females, mainly because males have XY sperm, so it only has one X possibility. Females have XXA, so they have two possible X alleles. In female mammals, one X chromosome is inactivated in each because females have two Xs. If both would be activated, then females would have twice the amount of proteins encoded by the X length genes than males. Not only would be imbalanced, it may cause mutations as well. We have a sperm that is XY, and I'm color coding the X's so we can see. You have an egg that represents XX. So with the different kinds of chromosome, a sperm can give an X sex chromosome or a Y chromosome. 
and this is why males determine the sex of the child would donate one or the other a zygote here are the possibilities you have parent here that has a blue x and a y for if it's a male and so the egg it will donate two different kinds of alleles because it has two x's we are in so the offspring if you were to be female you get one x from the father and one x from the mother so the father is here blue and one of each of the mother the male will get all the y's from the father that means the males only get a choice of either an x from the mother or another x from the mother whichever that the males only gets determined by the x trait from the mother whereas the females actually does get one x from the father and one x from the mother so they actually have a good mix how it's inherited from the mother and father are different the males are always determined by the father but they only get the X's from the mother, whereas the females get one of each. The X-link recessive condition, the gene is passed only onto the X chromosome, and they have dominant and recessive traits. Human colorblindness, and this is a recessive link condition. That means in order to get colorblindness, you have to have both recessive traits. So we have a healthy father that has an X, capital B, and a Y, and a mother that is a carrier because she has one healthy and one non-healthy. That would give both females here one healthy female and another carrier. And then the males may get one of the healthy X-linked gene from the mother or be recessive. And because the male only has one X, the male has no choice but to be affected because there's only one B and that's recessive they would have color blindness so human color is low can X chromosome it's recessive it's sex linked red weak color blindness is called proteinomy and red and green weak color blindness like a deuteronomy usually it happens when there's both of them um, and in this situation the X linked gene for red green Blind, color blindness is X link recessive. There are more males affected by color blindness than females because in females you actually have to have two X chromosomes recessive, whereas males you only get one X in order to be affected. The other type is hemophilia. In order to get hemophilia, it's, it's also an X link recessive gene. The mutation in a gene for gene calling factor 8. It's called hemophilia A4, called hemophilia B. When, if you suffer from a bleed, when you're severely cut, the blood cannot clot properly. Now, if it's a small clot, then you can. What happens is if there's a cut, it is hard for the body to clot. Now, if you have gene replacement, which is one of the more advanced technological features, it will help the clotting and prevent you from bleeding out. An example here where you have a healthy female who is a carrier because if you look at the genotype, you have one X with the recessive gene and one X with the dominant gene. And then you have an affected male who has one X recessive and of course the Y gene. Looking at the offspring, you will have one affected male offspring and affective female offspring. So there's a 25% chance of both of them getting hemophilia. When it looks like one of the females would be a carrier and then you have a healthy son. Lethal genes, phenotypic traits that will bring mutations that eventually cause early death. There's all kinds from dominant recessive traits that, so if you have a dominant trait, you could die. Huntington's disease is a dominant trait. If, if a parent has Huntington's disease, there's a higher chance that their progeny would also have Huntington disease, though they would die earlier than expected life. Hemophilia is a semi-lethal. That means sometimes it could kill and sometimes you could live your whole entire life with hemophilia. There's also synthetic leaf made by man. All right.